it was a search for the for the religion which will be usable for Russian nation. And only after that, after I started to study and learn about Islam, I discovered, or should I say, I understood the simple thing is that, that we, any, any man, any nation, any planet, the whole this world has a beginning and it has an end. And there is no point the worship to your nation does not have any meaning. Just because one day the planet and the solar system and everything will collapse. I mean, it's proved scientifically. It's just the matter of how many years or millions of years will it happen. But from this point of view, the idea for the paganists to stay in more, uh, to stay, you can say, to stay alive by staying alive through your children or through your grandchildren and so on and so forth, it has no meaning because the humanity is, uh, will come to its end, like, like everything on this planet. And after you realize it, you see that the nation should not be a false god, a false idol you worship to. And then, and only after that I realized that the the only one who, is, who deserves this worship is the one who created it. And only after that, I can say that I became truly Muslim. How did you become aware and uh, how did this happen? <coughs> I mean, in my town, there are, it's a small town, it's about 60,000 citizens. So uh, I did not know any Muslims in my town, so I just became Muslim on my own, said Shahada, and made a ritual bathing as it is supposed to be done. And only after that, I started to attend mosques, to I befriend Muslims, and finally, year, year after that, in 2007, I joined our Russian community, community of Russian Muslims, where we had regular classes, where we have regular gatherings, just to get and have a cup of tea. And the, from the, this is the, really the beginning of my, if you can use this word, growth and development as Muslim. Well, what I wonder is, uh, before becoming a Muslim, you didn't meet with any Muslim? No, the way I learned about Islam was only through books and listening to Quran, we can say. Because... So it means there is good enough books about Islam here in this country? Yeah, there are... I, uh, I read the translations of the meanings of Quran, the, the compilation of Hadith, the biography of our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which books did you read, uh, the, the, the life of Prophet uh, The famous Sirah by Ibn Ishaq. Uh, the translation of the old Quran, when you read it, what do you feel? I mean... Can you talk in the subject? I mean... Do you think that this is the, the book <coughs> of someone wrote? Or, mm. or did you feel that really this is the words of Allah? Mm. Can, can you express a little bit few minutes in this subject? What, what's Quran according to? When I was reading... A translation of Quran, I mean, there is always thing, the thing which was amazing me, at, it amazes me right, uh, every time, is that the way the human being is addressed, it is the, the way the Creator addresses its creation. Whenever He says something, He commands, and you can see it, this command comes from the one who has a right to command. When he promises good or whenever he warns you about anything, you have this feeling of, it, uh, of the fact that it comes from somebody who is capable to punish you or who is capable to reward you. And uh, the life of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's something where, uh, 
whoever knows it and whoever feels it, he feels it. I mean, from the moment I learned uh, about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I mean, I clearly recognize that this man is not a liar. That's the one thing I became sure of. After that, you need just some time to recognize it and recognize him as, as a messenger. But the one thing, you always can be sure that he's not, he's not a liar. So every person who, who meets him in his life, either directly or indirectly, like our generation, that's the only thing. He has a choice either to admit it and become a Muslim or he, he has his second option is to reject him. And by this rejection, I mean, I mean the incapability of admit him as a prophet, it indicates towards the state of a human being who rejects him. It's just the fact that it's not, this rejection is nothing but a reflection of the inner state of this person. Because basically, people who reject our Prophet Wasallam, they say, no, it's not possible. It's not possible that such a human being could exist. It's a fairy tales, it's, a li it's lies and things like that. It's just because of their, I mean, perverted nature. They cannot admit the existence of such a great man who brought the humanity from the darkness towards the light. And that's nothing but the, the fault in themselves, because they cannot acknowledge the existence of such a man. I mean, after you became Muslim, the first thing, the whole world view is changing. Before you view the world as a, some, as a sort of enemy, I mean, before I was, we can say, atheist, and this unbeliever, so the world was viewed as a chaotic, chaotic, we can say, cosmos, which is not controlled, and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, and you, you never be sure, you, basically you can never be relaxed. So the world is seen from this point of view as a certain, if not an enemy, something which is not friendly, at least. And basically you will never have a comfort in the, in the world, if you will view the world from such point of view. But once you accept the Creator, your, you can say all your worries are gone, because you know that there is somebody who created this world and who is, we can say, looking after it. And uh, you know that your provision will come to you wherever you are. You know that where, uh, Allah will take care of you, wherever you are. And it's literally, it, ha it happens every day. Every day we eat. Every day we go to sleep and next morning we, we are awakened. 